welcome to episode 59 of my crafting podcast. This is my fortnightly vlog about knitting, crochet, spinning, weaving, dyeing, anything else that seems like a good idea at the time. I'm an autistic woman living in the north of England with my husband, our three daughters and three cats. You can find me on social media in these places. And this is probably the penultimate episode of this podcast. I'm going to be moving to a different platform. So I'll tell you more about that later. But for now, let's get straight in. Um, I'll put timestamps below about when I talk about different crafts. So if there's anything that you're not wanting to watch or you're wanting to skip to, then you'll be able to move to that. Um, let's get going. So where are they now? What's happened to the projects you've already seen? Well, the first one to talk about is the Advent Blanket, um, which is me making loads and loads of squares out of minis or leftover sock yarn, um, putting an extra border on them and then pulling them together into bigger squares. Um, and that is almost finished. Um, I now have two squares left to do. Um, and I have saved for the last two of my favourite yarns. I've got my Easy Knits um, Solaris and this is a, um, a Volmeister that Linda gave me years ago. Um, so the last two, last two squares have been made with that. Um, and then I've just got, um, I'll have 18 squares left to get them made into two blocks. And that will be blocks 11 and 12. They need to be bordered, uh, joined, bordered and then blocked. And then I'll be able to start putting together the wider blanket. So checked out on the size last week to make sure that 12 big blocks is actually the right size and it is it's good it's bigger than my memory blanket um but mm, about single quilt size which is pretty much what I was aiming for so that it feels weird to say that I'm only making two more squares um it's really strange but yeah so that's almost finished um and then yeah once I've got the all the 12 blocks together I'll join them put another border on and then I'll hand it over to Andrea who will put the fleece on the back and sort all that out she's a star so um that's advent still ongoing um number two is golden willow so this is my um brioche project let's see how that's going on Oops. so this is where I was at when I talked to you last, so not much progress. I've just done another couple of repeats of this um, pattern. I'm still increasing at the moment. These are lifelines. Um, yeah, it's going fine. It's slow, um, but it, that's okay. I, this is my favorite bit, look at this, it's so pretty. Um, so the yarn I'm using is making the projects just lovely for me because it's just so gorgeous. Fine Fish Yarns Yak Singles, so it's 65% Merino, 20% Silk, 15% Yak. Um, it's just lovely. It's so soft and the, the way the um, brioche feels is just lovely. So I'm really enjoying the yarn. The project's a bit... I don't know. I'm not greatly enjoying the project at the moment. It's a matter of kind of cracking on through it, but I think it will pick up later on. So that's actually my only two works in progress. Um, so yeah, that's a bit weird, but it's okay. Um, I did have those socks and the glacial cowl. I think I've already told you about frogging socks. Yeah. I had the glacial cowl on last week. And that was a crochet corner to corner project that I was using with some hand spun. But strangely, I was saying on the podcast that I really liked the pattern and it was going fine. And then when I looked at it on, uh, when I was editing, I thought, actually, do you know what? I don't like that. And I just flogged it. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen that. It was my first um, experiment with IGTV, which is going to be the next platform I'm on. And um, I just flogged it and started. I just looked at it and thought it doesn't want to be crocheted. It would look better knitted. So I found a project, which is the Arte Show Cow. Um, I had to look up how to pronounce it because it was pretty obvious it wasn't going to be the Arctic Show. Um, Anyway, uh, found a project pattern and I loved it. And there it is. I, I finished it. It was very, very quick. So it's a free pattern and it's it's very simple. You do a yarn over, then you knit two, and then you pull the yarn over over those two, which is this button. 
um, and then you keep doing that all the way across and then you purl back. Very, very simple. Um, I use not all of the yarn. It's very frustrating because as I was casting off the last few stitches, it switched to pink, which is really annoying. Um, if I'd have been a bit more sensible, I could have just taken that back and just done the loop over rather than the knit in the last one. But anyway, and then crochet, uh, chain, crochet, slip stitch it together. So um, I had more yarn, but I didn't want it to be any bigger because I wanted it to be snug like that. So it holds really close to my neck and in cold weather I can have it covering my ears as well. And yeah, it's lovely. It's perfect. It's just what I wanted. Very, very happy with it. Um, yeah. And there is a little bit of yarn left and that's gone into my weaving stash. Actually, it's already, um, some of it's already been woven into my current weave. So there we go. That's done. Um, the rainbow. I had made a rainbow, you know, for those um, NHS rainbows that everybody's displaying. I'd made one, I showed it to you last week, but I was too lazy to come downstairs and get some cardboard to put inside it. I did, I had that yarn left over and I made another one. So it's obviously the reverse colours, but you know, I had very little red left and loads of um, purple. So I did a reverse and I did actually bother to put the cardboard in this time so it hangs a good deal better so the red one's already hanging in the house this one will be hanging up this afternoon uh so yeah that was a, a free pattern as well um and then i still had some cotton left over so i made what did i make i had it here a minute ago i know i did actually i filmed all this already but the um the laptop didn't record it i made that we can see my joins there. I wasn't particularly bothered about the joins. Um, so this is, uh, my husband has a frying pan with a metal handle, which he really likes because uh, he likes to make tortillas, you know, sort of Spanish tortillas with um, like a big omelette, eggs and stuff. And he likes to cook it on the stove and then put it in the oven with cheese on top and it all melts, it's lovely. Um, and actually, I'm just trying to talk about it. So, um, he needs a handle for it and I made him a handle for it a little while ago but it, he set fire to it it was too close to the edge of the um to you know the pan part and he set fire to it that was quite an exciting day that was so I've made him another one um and he's we've just ordered another pan a bigger pan for him for his birthday so I'll be making another of these I just think so the leftovers is that I was going to put them in my weaving stash but actually I just put them in my cotton stash I've got like a bag of cotton yarns for making kitchen and dining room stuff so that's another finished object and one more oh yeah the, the squid um i've been making squids for my daughters i'll just show you a pic of the last one because i gave it to my little one at the weekend and i don't know where it is now but that was with um drops farble uh and it's uh, got a fair isle effect parts to it and that was really annoying because you can't see where the next stitch is because one's blue, the next one's white, and the next one's blue. So you can't really see where your next stitch is. So that, the fiddly bit at the beginning was really annoying with that, but it was worth it. She loves it. So they've all, all three got one now, and then I've still got one for the library. I've also got for the library a whale and a pig that you've seen. So I'm going to start with some stars and some uh, hearts and things this week because the, the library are doing a yarn bombing event. So when they reopen, we're in about week eight of lockdown, in case you're watching this out of context. Um, when they do reopen, they want 100 little crocheted items scattered over the library so that people can pick them up. So we're working on that. Andrea's made a few little books. They're really cute. I'll show you them next time. Um, so, so yeah, that's the, uh, the little things. Okay, so that's all the knitting and crochet. Um, let's move on to spinning. So I have slightly lost touch with what I've already shown you. So if I've shown you something that I've already shown you, I do apologize. Have I shown you this? Um, this is, I think I had made, I can't remember it exactly. Oh, hang on. I think I'd done some thick and thin that that's right. I've made some thick and thin yarn with the JC Boggs, um, uh, online on crafty, uh, blueprint it's called here. And then I plied it with some mohair 
so there's some really lovely bits if you don't like this yarn please don't worry about it um it's it's very individual art yarn I, I love it because I weave if I wasn't a weaver I'd be thinking what the hell are you gonna do with that look at that it's so cute um some really nice little bits in it um quite a small skein with art yarn I, I tend to just make a small skein of something and see how it goes see how it looks in the weave um now I did finish this I think I think I got it wet um and then let it dry I think I can't quite remember I've done so much recently but yeah that's it, I'm not good at art yarn um even if it is your taste it's not good I know that again don't worry I am getting better all the time and enjoying the process that's probably my favorite bit of that skein I think a white bit so that's lovely um and then this uh also I showed you last week I bought a, a bat from Spin City and I just I loved it so much and I just really didn't want to touch it didn't want to do anything with it because I was afraid I'd mess it up but Andrea told me yes get on with it because there's more fiber you can get more fiber so I did I spun a um what did I spin it just a kind of random bumpy um thick and thin yarn with it and then I plied it um in these coils so it's quite similar to the last one but the fiber is just so beautiful and crucially I did this thing where you lock it in place so the plying thread here goes around a few times to lock this in place so this is not going to wobble around it wobbles around a little bit which is fine because when I'm weaving I want to pull it to the front and have it looking the way I want it to oh it was a little pink bit of something in there that's cute um but it can't go far because it's been bolted down there's another lovely area so yeah it's just beautiful and you know whether i've done the fiber justice or not is you know um a difficult question um but i'm learning and i didn't use it all as you can see again another small skein i didn't use it all um i'm learning and i'm enjoying it and getting better so that's some more art yarn and finally um i've been watching ashley martineau on youtube her videos are you can't mark them to watch later um i think it's because they used to be paid for and you can't um subscribe to her and get notifications i'm not exactly sure why but she talks about this thing called blur and that's what this is it's not actually fiber i've got um, a core which is a mohair again you can see the fluffy mohair and then this is just a whole load of four ply threads just thrown over in a bundle it's cute isn't it um so again that's going to be appearing in my weave and this bit will just be woven in and out and then this bit will come right to the front um so yeah i love it I just trying new techniques all the time getting better um all the time at that and then a bit more traditional spinning um my friend linda gave me ages ago and i'm going to bring it in with me gave me this which is um yeah and i actually i'll put in a pic here of um of the fiber in it so it was actually i think it was 10 colors um and i've not really known for a while exactly what i wanted to do with it um but now that my ashford wheel um as well as my magic craft is back up and running because i got a new drive band from adelaide walker for that and we fitted that so i've now got two wheels again and that is amazing so i could do a traditional uh, spin as well so i spun up that um all that fiber and in in the order that it appeared and there it is and now i have to decide what to do next so for those of you who are not particularly um up with spinning i can't just knit with this thread it's it's too twisty i'm not um good enough spinner to spin a balanced single as you can actually see there it's a, it's very twisty um so um if i apply it with another single another thread like that so like a cream one i was thinking about doing that to keep the color sequence that, but it's just going to dilute the color a bit because it will be twisted you know and um 
I'll try to find one to show you. When yarns are applied around each other and that you can see one of them is red and then one of them is white and then it changes to orange and white and whatever. The, the rainbow just won't, the colours will just be slightly diluted and I didn't want to do that. But if I apply it to itself, that will keep the colour sequence very, very well like I did with this. Um, but it cuts my yardage in three. So if I started out with, say, 300 metres of, um, of a single, then when I apply, apply it like this, I'll end up with 100 metres. And uh, as it's 100 grams, this was three, this is 150 grams. Um, so that's only 100 grams. So I wouldn't be able to make much with it if I dropped the yardage down to a third. So I had an experiment last night. I bought this a while ago from Yarn Etc, uh, my local yarn shop. And it's really, really lovely. It's thin and it's quite soft and silky. So I thought, how about if I thread plied it so it won't, um, the thickness of it will not be the same as the thickness of the single, so it won't dilute it in the same way, um, but it will keep the yardage where it is. So I tried out last night, I spun a single from some fibre that Sarah dyed for me. It's very dark green. It's almost a grey, really. And then I thread plied it with the gold. So I thought I would see how that affects the colour. And then, of course, the gold thread will run all the way through the spectrum. Um, and I don't think it would affect the colour. And it's still very soft. I was worried it, it might make it a bit more scratchy or stiff but the, the thread itself is really really silky so I think that works what do you think so what I would do then is just thread ply with the gold and the single all the way through from purple through the red um, and then I should have it's the thickness of it at the moment it won't be an awful lot thicker with the thread so it's somewhere between sport and DK I would say um, so that would give me quite a lot of meterage to play with um, and in a rainbow so that would be quite fun I could I don't know I could maybe make fingerless mitts I don't know I've got quite a few pairs of fingerless mitts so I don't know um, that's the thing with being a process crafter is that you don't necessarily know what to do with things when you've made them <laughs> so anyway that's a lovely project and I'm really really enjoying that um, okay that's the spinning Let's go on to dyeing. So last week I announced the winner of the um, Lockdown Rainbow Socks Cow. And that was Kitty Scrapper. Um, and did I announce it last week? No, I didn't. I announced last week that I was going to draw it. That's what I did. So then I drew it the next day. Uh, which was the day that the lockdown um, restrictions changed very slightly. Um, so the person who won is Kitty Scrapper on um, uh, Instagram, who's actually Nancy. So she's getting this lovely bag uh, made by Gemma D Makes, and inside it has these lovely little stitch markers and um, a skein of yarn from yarnundyed.net. Um, a <clears throat> extra fine merino and cashmere blend and she wanted me to dye it for her and she said something bright and cheerful so I'm quite excited by these the look of these yarns that have you know this kind of all grey or something and they've got little spots of colour at one end now I'm not technically good enough as a dyer to um, achieve that kind of thing but I tried something kind of similar so we've got this red section, we've got this teal section, and we've got this purple section. And then the rest of it. Oops, hang on. That's only my pen, sorry. The rest of it is a kind of light blue. Now the light blue is meant to be more distinct from the teal. I didn't want it to be as similar as that, but it looks slightly better in real life. So then you've got a little bit of bleed from one to the other. Um, and so, yeah, so that's the skein. Nancy, I hope you like it. Um, there it is. So I need to actually, I think I need to get your address, don't I, so I can post it to you. So that is going to go in the bag um, with the stitch markers, and that's going to come out to Nancy 
um, fairly soon. That's lovely. Okay, so that was some dyeing that I did, but I also I got two big boxes of locks from Andrea as I was passing. She chucked the hooks at me, the boxes at me. Well, not as I was literally passing, I was passing to go to the butcher's and I parked outside and she gave me two boxes of locks. And the deal is that I dye them and then she gets half them back. And I was looking around for them. Oh, here we are. So I've had a wonderful time um, dyeing locks, basically. So if you don't um, spin, locks are the kind of curly bits from a sheep. So... So this is what I did earlier on in the week. Look. These are all Wensleydale, I think. So lots of different greens, pinks, um, yellows, cream. And then yesterday I did a load, but it hasn't had a chance to get dry yet. And I've, it's too warm here for the radiators to come on. Um, but I think what I might do is I might Put these in a bra bag you know the bags that you have to put bras in to go in the washing machine and hang it outside on the, on the line so here's a kind of range of purples now the, the um dye i used is wilton's violet and it's famous for splitting which is exactly what i wanted so we've got some deep purple bits we've got some blue bits we've even got some red bits in there that's not dry yet and then teal so these two need to get dry and then that's all the Wensleydale done and then I've got some other another box of I can't remember what they are so that's the first batch so what do you think Andrea they look cute don't they so I'm really looking forward to um meeting up with Andrea when the lockdown is over and we can pick through and she can choose the bits she wants so I'm really been enjoying that I've got a dime off as well okay. So whenever there's some dye left in the pot and the locks don't seem to want to take any more, I just throw in a skein. It's the same skein. It keeps going in. I'm calling this more is more because I just keep throwing it in and I'm going to keep doing it until I like it. I don't much like it just yet. Um, I don't know. And an awful feeling that the more I add to it, the worse it will get. But I don't know. It's kind of a rainbow. It's, I don't know. More is more. So, yeah. This is one of these um, reusable cable ties, which is just, if you ever do decide to dye any, a bit of yarn, they're so useful because no matter what the ties you put on, it's no, nowhere near as useful as this for hooking it out and making sure you've got the, the skein straight. So um, that's my dyeing. Um, something new. Um, so I talked to you last week about the um, plans to start the bipolar which is a pattern by Alistair Post Quinn. And he's got a course um, on Craftsy Blueprint. I talk a lot about that at the moment. I'm not sponsored by them, obviously. Um, but I got a subscription. So I've just been watching a lot of their stuff. And he's got a video on double knitting. So that's where you're making two pieces of fabric at once. Um, and you can do colour work, which works the opposite way in the other side. It's really cool. So um, I'll put a picture of bipolar in here. So me and my friend Kathy are doing that. I, um, uh, not Adrian, I know Andrea is going to do it with us. Uh, if anybody else wants to join us, then do. But um, my yarn came for that this week. I say it came. I swung by on my way again to. Um, the same trip to the butchers. I swung by the yarn shop and she threw it out the door at me. So these are the two yarns. Um, it's Erica Knight British Blue 100, which basically means it's um, Blue Face Leicester 100%. It's really, really soft. Um, it's DK and I don't have an awful lot of DK. I showed you last week I got a couple of skeins from... Uh, I'm going completely blank. Cat and Sparrow. And I love them, but they didn't have enough contrast, really. So it's pure, pure British blue face Leicester wool, 100%. Um, and yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the orange. On the website, it looked a bit more sort of burgundy, but that's okay. They go beautifully together. Um, well, they contrast beautifully, and that's going to look good in the cow. So I've got to make work a swatch 
um, I'm going to make a swatch flat. Actually, could end up giving that to the library, couldn't I? M make use of it. But just to get the technique, I'm, I'm much. I'm a very much a deep end girl. I tend to throw myself straight at the deep end um, rather than starting easy. But just this time, for some reason, I think it's probably because of the quality of this yarn. It's just so lovely. I don't want to mess it up, so I'm going to work a swatch um, in the technique and then see how that. Um, how that works and then I'll be casting on this. Kathy's yarn is going to arrive in the next week or so, so um, there's no rush. Let's get over there. There's no rush with that, but I'm going to be starting that fairly soon. So that's 200 grams of yarn in. Now, I mentioned before that Sarah and I are having a bit of a, not a competition with each other, but a competition with ourselves to track the yarn and fibre in versus the yarn and fibre out. I just noticed Sarah's just texted me to say that she's finished something and so she's got, I've got a spreadsheet. And it shows yarn of fibre in, yarn of fibre out. Um, and last week, so far for the month, I was 889 grams down. So I had used 889 grams more. And that's right up to finished objects. It's not like making yarn. Um, 889 grams more than I had, had come in. And today it's 904. Oh, that idiot cat's doing um so it's gone up by <laughs> 15 grams but it's actually um i've just got 200 grams of yarn in so i've used just a little bit over 200 in that week um so i'm keeping track of that i'm wanting to get to a kilogram this month which obviously won't be too difficult it's only got another 100 to go i don't know how i'm going to account for the advent blanket um but i'll work that out so yeah we're both doing quite well with that keeping a log and it's basically to try and not stop us buying things because we're both quite committed to helping small companies and you know all the indie dyers and everything but just to try and make sure that we're keeping pace with it so <clears throat> on that figure to be negative so um at least we, we're using more than we're buying so that's good um oh so I opened, you know, Sarah and I have this swap thing. So we're always sending each other parcels of swap stuff. And we open them when we're, we're having a video chat or whenever we're feeling a bit down and want a bit of a boost. And um, I opened one this week from Sarah. And do you remember Shark Attack? It was um, uh, a colourway I dyed. It had blues and greens. And it had this sudden splash of red. And um, I tried to recreate it for Adriana a month or two ago and sent her that. Well, Sarah has made me this shark attack sock set it's the cutest thing so there is i think let's open it up there's a 61 gram skein because she asked me <clears throat> how much yarn i use in a sock there's a 61 gram skein of this beautiful um tonal blues and greens very ocean feeling and then 30 23 grams for the toes and heels um, of this the splash of blood in the water. It's absolutely fab. I love it. I really love it. So looking forward to having a go at that. And also in that package was this, which is just magnificent. It's a little needle case. I have got one needle that I use for sock weight yarn running in ends. And because of the, um, the uh, advent project, I'm always running in ends on that project. So I keep my little needle in there. But I want it in other places as well. And I probably have got other needles. I've got a load of, but I haven't got anywhere to keep them safe. So look at this. It's so cute. So I can now put a needle or two in there and have it in a project where I'm going to be running in ends a lot. Perfect. Absolutely love it. So that's all my um, something news. Let's look at plans. Bipolar I've talked about. I need to ask you advice about this. So this is my bag of leftover sock yarn. Most of it is stuff that I've already made a project with. And this is what's left over because I only use about 60, 70 grams of sock, the 100 gram skein for socks. Um, and there's one for weighing scale, it's so cute. And then there's <coughs> minis. Um, pretty much all of the minis, certainly all the advent minis went into the advent blanket, but I did get some minis at the beginning of my yarn club. Um, and some of those are in there as well. And so I need, uh, for years, for 
two and a half, three years I've had the memory blanket and all of my leftovers have gone into that. And then when I finished the memory blanket, they've been going into the advent blanket. Um, and obviously that's, you know, going to be finishing soon. So I need another project and I'm not particularly keen on making another blanket. I've got two sock weight blankets and I don't really want another one. So I'm looking for projects to make with leftover sock yarn. I'm thinking potentially, um, I don't know. I mean, Franken socks are great. Uh, but the thing with that is I've got already tons and tons of gorgeous sock yarn. So I'm unlikely to think, oh, OK, I'll make a pair of socks. But instead of using that lovely Claire Nettleship self striping, I've got all that uh, wonderful easy knits, um, sparkle sock yarn. I'll make something with leftovers. I don't think I would do that. So Franken socks isn't really an option. Blanket isn't really an option. Um, but as I said, I'm getting an advent calendar in December. So I'm going to have another, I think they're 10 grams. Another 20 odd 10 gram minis or five gram anyway. <laughs> and all of that. And then any other socks I make in the interim, the leftovers for them. So I need to have another project. Give me some ideas. Okay. Um, right. Okay. Let me tell you about the, the issues I'm having with the podcast. So <clears throat> you're already noticing uh, people are that I've got sound issues. It's not as loud as it should be. Um, and I'm recording on an old laptop. Um, and I'm also editing on the old laptop. And then I'm using the new laptop to upload to YouTube. The reason I'm recording on the old laptop is that the microphone on the new laptop is even worse than the microphone on the old laptop and the software that I use uh, Movie Maker I've got it on my old laptop is no longer available for the um, the new laptop and the free software that is available you can't put captions on and you've seen how often I use captions um, and I can record on my phone and my iPad that's great but I can't then get those files onto my laptop to um, edit them. And again, editors that are available on iPad and um, iPhone are, you can't add captions, not, not in the way that I do. So I've decided it's time for a change, um, particularly as, and it needs to be now because the sound is already starting to go um, and the camera's starting to go and I know this laptop is gonna die and then I'll be stuck. So I've decided to move before I am pushed and I'm going to go to a different format. I'm going to go to Instagram and they have a function called IGTV, Instagram TV, which is where you can put videos on. Now the videos are only up to 15 minutes um, or it might even be 10. That's a bit confusing in the information, but, um, and you can put, um, you can put as many as you want on, but they're, they're very short. And what happens is if you, if they come up in the, the feed and you can play the first 45 seconds and then you click to say, do you want to watch some more? So I'm going to be switching to that. Um, I'm recording today, obviously. I'm recording again next week. That's episode 60. But from beginning of June, it's going to be IGTV. So if you're already on Instagram, then pick me up. Follow me on Mel Brown Crafting Podcast. Um, if you want to make sure that you're notified when an IGTV goes up, because one of the issues is with YouTube, you get notified. If you've selected notifications, you get notified to say that there's a, a new video up. You can do the same with IGTV. So if you go on to click on my profile on Instagram, uh, on the middle left, it says following, drop that down, go into notifications and click IGTV. And that means it'll actually notify you when I put a new IGTV on. So when there's a new video up, um, if you're not on Instagram, then, you know, go ahead, join. <laughs> if you're not going to join, then uh, sadly, I'm not going to be seeing you anymore. And I'm sorry about that. Um, but unfortunately, with hardware and software issues, there's nothing I can do. So um, the it'll be a very different format. And it's OK. I am ready for a change. Um, the, the format will be much more punchy, short videos. But I'll, I'll be able to do things like record a, a section of me weaving or record a section of me spinning or record a section of me out and about doing stuff. And I'll be able to merge them together. I haven't really been able to do that because, again, I can't get the videos from my phone onto the laptop. It's ridiculous that I can't, but I can't. Trying to plug the two together and they will not communicate. Um, so I'll be able to do more out and about filming and stuff. Um, I'll edit it in a very basic editor, uh, iMovie editor on my iPad, 
and then I'll upload it directly to an IGTV. So there'll be 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes long, but there could be plenty of them. And because there's less editing and less piddling about, and I probably won't do, well, I won't do show notes, I'll be able to do many more of them. So have a think um, if you have been watching for a while about what you would like. Think of something different. I'm not going to replace what I'm already doing. I'm going to do something different. What would you like to see? Would you like to see, um, say, I mean, I can split things up so I can do a, a weaving segment and just do 10 minutes on weaving. I can show you what I'm doing at the moment, a technique I'm enjoying um, and how I go about colour choices or whatever, something like that. I could do something specific on spinning. And then rather than having the little tags down below to tell you what you want, you could say, oh, that one's on spinning. I'm not interested in that one. Next time I get notification, oh, that's on weaving. I'll have a look at that. So it'll give you the option to pick and choose what you watch more. But what kind of thing would you like? Would you like more of a vlog? Um sort of out and about vlog not that there's any out and about at the moment but there will be at one point um what what kind of things would you like to see in a new format vlog so that's what's going on there um personal stuff uh we had a party um last weekend it was our our one of our cats the middle cat not the oldest and not the youngest cat it was her fourth birthday on the saturday and on the Sunday, it was my and her husband's 21st wedding anniversary. And actually on the Monday, it was my brother's birthday. But he doesn't live with us. So we decided to have a party on the Saturday. And it was a kind of like a stretched out of the whole day party. And it was so much fun. I did um, a scavenger hunt. I don't know if you remember those, if you're British from when you were a kid. But we haven't done them here, never. But um, my daughter did one, the oldest did one with her friends on, um, on a Zoom call. And I thought I'd do one for the kids and it was the best fun. I tell you, if you've got not very much time, but you want to do something mad and crazy with the kids, it's brilliant. Just write a list of, say, 10 different things, random things like a pen, a post-it note. Um, what did I do? A ball of wool, a ball of yarn, um, an unbroken egg. That's a dangerous one. Um, and uh, a pair of socks, say, or something random like that, a candle. And you have them all in front of you and you say, tell them, candle. And they all have to go off and the first person to put one of those in your hand gets a point. And at the end of it, the person who wins. And I bought a box of chocolates for the prize. And uh, yeah, there was there were some injuries because they were all very... And my eldest daughter is five foot eleven and my youngest daughter is about five foot four. And um, <laughs> the eldest is a rugby player. So, so they had a few clashes. Um, and... It, Sometimes the big, the bigger than little would run off and then Lexi would stand there and think and she'd actually go to something in the room. So it was really interesting the way we approached it differently, but it was the most fun. We used to do treasure hunts quite a bit where you write out, make out clues and you have to take a clue to another room and they go to that room and bring find another clue. And those are fun, but they take a lot of organising and printing and, find, and putting things around. Whereas the scavenger hunt took no preparation whatsoever. All I did was think of a list of 10 or 12 different things and it was so much fun. So have a go at that. It's really good. And um, we, my daughter made a cat cake, he's a pig. And we did a Kahoot. I don't know if you've come across that, that's an app where you can all sign in and somebody creates a quiz. So one of the children, Lexi, created a quiz on the cat, Pip. And um, there's 10 questions or something and you all sit there with your own device and we all sit together looking at the question, then you press, you answer. And the person who gets the most answers and the quickest responses wins. So it's really good fun. And she did a slideshow as well of a zoomed in picture of one of our cats and you had to guess which one it was. Um, it was absolutely brilliant. And then uh, we had party poppers and there's still bits of those hanging off the lights. And we had balloons. And after tea, we all had a spontaneous game of balloon tennis. Now, if you don't know what that is, that's where you're all stood in a room and you bat the balloon back and forth. And the aim is to keep it off the floor. So whatever you need to do, kick it, whatever, hit it, you keep it off the floor. And it... Um, it was a spontaneous moment of absolute joy. We had so much laughter. It was so fun. It was a really good day. Um, and then on Monday, we Zoomed with my brother to wish him happy birthday, um, which was lovely. I think we're going to use the, using Zoom a lot more. It's really good. <clears throat> so um, the other thing was I told you last week that I'd had a bit of a crisis over dairy. Um, I'd had a flare in my um, auto-inflammatory condition um, after eating a lot of dairy. And I thought maybe I need to give up dairy so <clears throat> it's been a funny week had a couple of days off dairy and it hasn't improved my situation at all um, and then I've just gently 
um, reintroduced but small amounts less than I was having before I had the flare so it's possible it wasn't really dairy that caused it it's very difficult to know because it could be anything I've eaten it could be stress it could be hormones it could be anything um, but uh, yeah so I then decided I wanted to speed up the healing because I'm in a lot of pain with it um, so I decided on Sunday I did what what's known as OMAD which is one meal a day so I had a solitary Sunday which I've talked to you about before I basically just went to the office uh, Dave's office shut the door to have my knitting projects and and I just stayed there all day um, I'd, I'd done some spinning in the morning before everybody was up but I went in there about nine ish and I was there all day and uh, I didn't I don't eat when I do that I just have water or tea herbal tea and I just spend the whole day just on my own and that's really contrary to what we we would been taught for years and years um actually having a long period without eating is extremely good for your body um we've been told it puts you in starvation mode and all that kind of stuff well it does put you in a, a kind of mode like that but that's actually a very positive mode because it, it sets your body around clearing up the mess you know if you if you've always got new um clothes coming in then you don't bother to tidy up the old clothes and clean them do you um but when you have a time when you can't get any new clothes you pick up the old ones wash them bin them tidy them up whatever it's a bit like that with the body and it's called autophagy do have a look at it i'll put that how it's written here um but it's uh if you go for a period of say 10 12 14 hours without eating your body goes into clear up mode and it clears up all um uh, broken down blood cells and various other things in the body um that can cause an issue and it reboots your immune system it's very very good for you to do that um, there's lots of research on that there never was any research so as i can see to support the idea that uh, fasting puts you into a, a, a pathological starvation mode but there's a lot of research to support the fact that um, periods of fasting and you know it doesn't uh, just it doesn't mean no water it just means just water to keep you hydrated is actually very very beneficial in lots of ways anyway so I've got my soapbox a bit there um so I did that on Sunday and I actually felt a little bit better on Monday so I've decided to continue that so this week I'm just doing one meal a day um so I'm just drinking herbal tea and water all day and then having a dinner um with the family in the evening which is lovely and it's working really well for me and that I think is going to speed up the healing because of the autophagy and also reduce the amount of any um trigger foods I eat because I'm only eating one meal a day I just have to make sure I keep my fibre and my vegetables up um, to keep things moving. So that's that. Okay, so um, unless anything changes, we've got one more um, uh, episode of this next week and then we'll switch to IGTV. So please do let me know what you think about the transfer to IGTV. If you've got issues with, with Instagram, let me know um, and I'll see if I can help you with them. Um, one of my friends, Andrea, she's not on Instagram, so I don't know what she's going to do. Um, we'll, we'll sort something out. But yeah, so if, if you're on Instagram, then just make sure you're following me and, and click so that um, it gives you notification when I do an IGTV, if, if you want to keep up with it. Um, it's up to you. There won't be show notes, but generally, if you already have me on Ravelry, if, if you were going to Ravelry for the show notes, um, if you uh, look at my profile you'll be able to see all the projects I'm doing I've, I've put the projects on pretty uh, readily so you'll be able to see the patterns and everything and if there's something specific you want to know about then just reply to the Instagram uh, TV post and I will let you know okay so that's me done have a great week happy crafting um, and uh, you will see me next week bye